so that's what I would have done. I would have continued, because that's what, that's what the setup was. The ending to Halloween 4 was like, oh, shit. And then Halloween 5 was like, oh, yeah, no, 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 we, 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 we were gonna, and, and then we just, no, 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 <laughs> psych, you know, and it's like, why the fuck would you do that? You know, if you're gonna psych us out, at least create something really cool. And we're like, okay, they psyched us out, but five is like, fuck. No, it's like you psyched us out and gave us a big pile of donkey shit on a plate. Hey folks, how you doing? Dave McRae here. I know, two videos in two days? What the hell is going on? Um, okay, so uh, this video is going to be about uh, basically how um, Halloween 5 destroyed the series. And uh, it was, it was Halloween 5 that put the nail in the coffin for the Halloween franchise. A lot of people like to turn to Halloween 3 because it had nothing to do with, you know, Halloween 1 or 2, right? It didn't have Michael Myers in it and, you know, that was when they were sort of beginning the anthology process and they were gonna, you know, kind of go off over here and see how, and it didn't do well and it bombed at the box office and it bombed with fans at the time, okay? Uh, now, in 2017, Halloween 3 has become, for all intents and purposes, like a cult classic, right? It's, you know, a lot of fans really like it. Not everybody, but a lot of people really do enjoy it. Um, I like it too. I think it's okay. I, 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 I don't think it's great, but I think it's okay. I think it's a lot better than it gives, uh, sorry, than it gets credit for. Um, and I think if they had removed Halloween 3 from the title and just called the movie Season of the Witch, um, I think psychologically, um, it would have resonated with people more. Uh, but that being said, uh, so in 1988, of course, they release Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. Now, um, make sure my hat is straight. Um, now, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers, I don't think is a great movie. I don't think it's a great movie. But I do think it is a decent return. And I've always felt this way ever since I first saw it 30 years ago. Uh, well, not quite. It's 1987. It'll be 30 years next year. But you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, I've, I've always thought that it was a decent return. It was an acceptable return. They had a lot to live up to, okay, for the to the 1978 classic. They had a lot to live up to, to Halloween 2, in my opinion. Now, some people even like Halloween 4 uh, more than part 2. I don't. So I'm speaking from my perspective, okay? Um, yeah, I mean, they had a lot to live up to. It was a tall, or, you know, it was a tall task to take on. The bar was set very, very, uh, very, very high. And of course, there was like seven years in between Michael Myers movies. And Freddy and Jason had taken the horror, you know, genre of the 1980s by storm. And uh, nobody gave a shit about Michael Myers in 1988. So when it came out, uh, there was a lot of expectations and a lot to live up to. And I don't think they met those expectations, but I don't think they missed them by a huge margin. I think if you were to... Um, First of all, and I understand why they couldn't, there was legalities around not being able to use the Shatner mask, but hypothetically speaking, had George P. Wilbur been able to wear the Shatner mask, um, that would have improved the movie hugely. I mean, you know, it, it wouldn't have, you know, negated all the other problems it has, but just doing that alone in any Halloween movie instantly improves your Halloween movie, okay? Because that is the face, no pun intended, of Halloween. That is that is what people are waiting for. That is iconic. I mean, imagine, you know, imagine Jason's mask looking nothing like a hockey mask, you know, or it kind of is, but it's not really. It's like, well, wait a minute, that that doesn't make any sense, right? Because it's so identified with that look, especially in 1988, because there had been no other masks prior to that. So, um, so yeah, so I've always felt that Halloween 4 was a decent return, and I loved the way it ends. Who doesn't love Danielle Harris, right? Um, and she was fantastic in, in that role as Jamie Lloyd. And the way the movie ends, I thought was ballsy. I don't think if, I don't know if the filmmakers definitely knew what they were going to do with a Halloween 5, if there would be a Halloween 5. Um, but I think they should have continued it uh, exactly how they ended it. And I don't mean right from that moment like they did with 1 and 2, but yes, continue with that narrative. Michael is gone for now, maybe. Um, and, uh, can, I, I want to, I'm, I became emotionally attached to this brilliant little actress, Jamie Lloyd, and now she's just, you know, stabbed her stepmom and it's like, what the fuck? Dr. Loomis, no, no, 
Whoa, right? It's kind of like, what the hell, right? So yeah, so I always thought that it was a decent return to the franchise. It wasn't perfect. There's a lot of things I don't like about it. I think the cinematography is suspect in certain areas with capturing the same type of mood and atmosphere as John Carpenter's original. That being said, the opening, the opening credit sequence of Halloween 4 is one of the best opening sequences in the entire franchise. And of course they shot, I believe they shot in Salt Lake City. I think that's where they shot or in and around that area. Um, and it and Halloween 4 has one of the best feeling autumn, you know, fall vibes of any of the Halloween films. It really feels like fall and October and Halloween. They did a fantastic job at that. Um, but of course, I wasn't a huge fan of George P. George P. Wilbur's portrayal of the shape. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of some of the side characters. I did like Sheriff Meeker. Uh, Donald Pleasance is great in it. And yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot to love. There's a lot to not like about Halloween 4, but at the same time, there's almost just as much that you could really love about the film. I thought, you know, the filmmakers took it seriously. And if you read up on it and you know a lot about Halloween 4 and the production that surrounded that, of course, they wrote the script in like, what was it, like a couple of weeks or something like that. It was, it was really fast. It moved into production really quickly. Um, so they didn't have a lot of time to pay attention to the script and the fine details that would have maybe helped with the pacing and really sort of, you know, kind of just take your time a bit, you know, pay more attention to the psychological aspect of Halloween and Michael Myers and the shape. Uh, maybe if they had more time, they would have been able to do that. But all in all, it was a decent return. Wasn't perfect, wasn't great, but it was decent. Halloween 5 is what killed Halloween 4 and is what destroyed the franchise. Halloween 5 is a fucking shit show. Now, again, if some of you like Halloween 5, that's okay. That's totally cool. I don't. And we can agree to disagree. Totally fine, right? That's the great thing about about this industry and about talking about movies. Um, but Halloween 5, oh my God, where do I fucking begin? Well, look, I mean, I could go on and on and on and on and on. But what I want to do is I want to draw your attention to a few key components of Halloween 5 that were not needed. I don't understand why they fucking did this. That totally takes me out of the movie that is completely unnecessary from a narrative story, production design perspective, um, which if you were to remove these things, it doesn't mean you'd have a great sequel to Halloween 4, but it would be better. You know, it's an improvement. Let's talk about Jamie Lloyd um, and the fact that now all of a sudden she has this psychic sort of telekinesis, telepathy, whatever the hell you want to call it, um, you know, communication thing with her uncle. Why? Why? Now, maybe some of you like that. I don't. It takes me out of it. Now it's becoming very science fiction-y, okay? Now, I'm not saying that telepathy isn't real. I'm not saying that there aren't certain people in this world that have gifts or that don't have gifts. I'm not here to argue that, okay? That's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to simply say that when you include that element into this movie, now all of a sudden it becomes a little science fiction-y. It becomes a little sort of oh, now she's communicating with her uncle through their minds and she can feel her uncle and, you know, she's doing this at the camera. And it's just kind of like, I didn't, I didn't like the way, I, I didn't like that. I wouldn't have written that. I thought it was garbage. I thought that was fucking garbage. Um, I also hated the fact that they killed off her sister. Look, outside of Danielle Harris, okay, Rachel was the strongest female character they had in Halloween 4. I became emotionally attached to her. I thought she was great. She was somebody you could root for, okay? She was sort of like the new Laurie Strode. Now, some people might, you know, uh, turn to um, Jamie Lloyd, but Jamie Lloyd, for me, was a little too young to take on that role. Um, she was only, what, nine or 10 years old, so I didn't feel that sort of attachment to her, although she was fantastic and great in Halloween 4. Rachel sort of had that a little more of that vibe, not completely, but a little more of that vibe um, because of her age. And the idea to kill her was fucking stupid, fucking stupid to kill her off because the only redeemable things about Halloween 4, you could argue, were Rachel and Jamie. 
You could make that argument. There are other things that are good too, of course, but you could make that argument from a character perspective, Donald Pleasance aside, because he's great in every fucking movie. Even Halloween 5, he's good. I don't know how the hell he fucking pulled that off. And Donald Pleasance is on record, by the way. You can look this up. I don't know if it was a, it was an article from way, way, way back. Donald Pleasance is on record as saying how, you know, I thought Halloween 4 was interesting. It was kind of okay. But I thought Halloween 5, he said Halloween 5 was rubbish. He's British, let's not forget that, right? And he used the word rubbish. I remember reading it in an article way back when I was a, you know, a kid. Rubbish. I remember that standing out to me because I'm half British. My mother was born in England. Not that she ever used that word, but it stood out to me as a British word, right? Ah, it's rubbish. It's rubbish. And it is! It's a fucking shit show! So yeah, the, the whole idea to kill Rachel uh, so early in the film, and to kill her at all, was stupid. It was dumb. Uh, she was a character that, that gave weight, um, to Halloween 4 and would only continue to do so in Halloween 5 if it was written properly and if it was an actual good movie. But Rachel is probably one of the only redeeming qualities about Halloween 5 and you kill her off. So now it's like, oh, fuck, great. Now, now I have to rely on this fucking 10 year old girl to get me through this fucking, you know, hundred minute shit show. Um... So that was fucking stupid. Uh, another thing that I hated was the Myers house. Why is the Myers house a fucking gothic mansion? Why does it look like that? It looks nothing like the Myers house from Halloween 1 and 2. Nothing. Literally nothing. Now look, I understand from a production standpoint that they may not have been able to use the original Myers house for various reasons. I get it. I understand that. That's not what I'm complaining about. I'm not complaining that they didn't use the original Myers house. Hey, if they could have, that would have been great, of course, right? From a continuity perspective. But that's not what I'm complaining about. I'm complaining that this looks literally nothing like the Myers house. From... Why didn't the production designer find a house that looked similar? Maybe it doesn't look identical, right? But take the Myers house in Halloween 6, okay? Take the Myers house in The Curse of Michael Myers. That doesn't look anything like the original Myers house, but it looks a hell of a lot more like the original Myers house than the one in Halloween 5 does, right? You can look at The Curse of Michael Myers' Myers house and go, okay, I buy it. You know, I buy it. You know, it's, it doesn't really look like it, but okay. The house in Halloween 5? What the fuck is this? You know, and there's like these iron gates, you know, that Dr. Loomis has to go through and he's, and the house is this big kind of, you know, all these hallways and that. What is this? Who on the team said, that's a good idea? Who was the production designer? That's a good idea. This is great. Yeah, we'll all agree on this. It looks literally nothing nothing like the Myers house fucking pisses me off to this day. I, I can't stand it Be, because it doesn't make sense. The, the reason why it pisses me off as much as it does folks is because there's no reason for it. They did not have to use that house. They did not have to use that house. That was a conscious choice. And that, if anything, should tell you that they don't give a fuck about the Halloween franchise or have any respect to keeping continuity and keeping things, you know, within the ballpark. They don't care. They just saw that and said, oh, that looks like a cool kind of haunted kind of house. Let's use that as the Myers house. What are you, a fucking idiot? Anyway. Um, oh, geez. Another thing I didn't like about Halloween 5, of course, was... Whenever you see the police officers, there's always like this undertone of this comedy cartoon uh, music. And I understand that they wanted to give the impression that they're, you know, bumbling cops, right? They're idiots. There is no reason to have the cops, every time we see these two, you know, um, deputies, you know, you hear this. This is not a fucking comedy horror. I mean, this isn't a little sort of, you know, spoof. This is a, this is supposed to be a serious sequel to Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. And now I'm hearing these like fucking Barney Fife, Andy Griffith style sort of just cutesy. Co Why am I hearing this? It takes me out of the moment. You don't have to have this cartoon music to signal to the viewer that these cops are idiots. Yeah, I'll know they're idiots by how you write their fucking characters, okay? The fact that you have to add this, oh, by the way, in case you didn't know, these cops are idiots. What are you, a fucking idiot? Okay, 
write the characters to be idiots in a responsible, respectful, and meaningful way, okay, in a mature way, write, you know, write good characters, write good dialogue, and I'll be able to figure out they're fucking idiots, okay, because of their motives, okay? I don't need this little cute cartoon music underneath. What the hell is that shit? Um, another thing I didn't like about Halloween 5 was, um, uh, was the mask. Uh, I hated the mask. I wasn't a fan of the mask. I didn't like the mask in Halloween 4 either. I didn't at all. But if I had a choice between the mask and four or five, I would have gone back to the mask and four. Now, comment below and let me know, folks. I don't know the specific reason as to why they didn't go back to the mask from Halloween uh, four. Maybe it was destroyed. Maybe uh, it didn't fit properly. Maybe, you know, the mask they bought, they probably had a couple. Maybe the mask they bought for the production of Halloween four, they couldn't get anymore. But listen, it was only a year later, Okay. Halloween 4 came out in 88, Halloween 5 came out in 89. Where's the mask from Halloween 4? Okay, why isn't it being used? Was it too small for Don Shanks? Maybe that's the fucking reason. Uh, Don Shanks' portrayal is the shape? Eh, no, I, I wasn't a fan. I was, I mean, he wasn't terrible, but I wasn't a fan. Um, another thing I didn't like was at the end of the movie, uh, when, uh, Jamie and Michael are sort of, you know, together in the, are they in the attic or something like that? I think they're in the attic. Um, but Jamie's lying down and Michael's coming with the knife and she's like, uncle, uncle, you know, and he stops and, and can I see, you know, and, and take, what the hell is this? What is this? You know, and then he takes off his, I remember, okay, the promotional material for Halloween five, the revenge of Michael Myers, uh, on the posters in the movie theater back in the day, cause I was 10 and I do remember this. And on the, on the VHS boxes as well, it said, Michael Myers is finally unmasked. He's finally unmasked. What do you mean he's finally unmasked? He was unmasked at the end of Halloween one. There's another fucking thing they don't give a shit about. If they knew the franchise, if they knew the roots, if they knew where it comes from, if they had respect for Carpenter's classic, they would know that at the end of the original Halloween, he's already been unmasked, you fucking idiots. Now this isn't necessarily coming coming from uh, the, um, uh, uh, the people that made the film, okay? This is part of the marketing and somebody fucking didn't get the memo, okay? So you can't blame the production necessarily of Halloween 5 for that, but it's just another fucking example of the shit show that Halloween 5 is. And he wasn't really unmasked. I mean, yes, he was, but everybody was expecting to see his face, right? We were expecting, oh my God, you know, we're gonna see his face. We don't, we see like, this much of his face, okay? We see like an eyeball and a tear, a tear. Now, first of all, why am I seeing his eyes? Okay, because from what I remember, this is in the same timeline that he was shot in the face, okay? And if you're gonna show that his hand is all burned, why not Why not see like, um, you know, I don't know, like a, a do some sort of makeup job where it kind of looks like he has an eye, but he kind of doesn't or something like that. Like that would have been cool. That would have been cool where it's kind of like, oh shit, oh, does he have an eye? Oh fuck, I don't even think he has an eye, dude. That's fucking like, look at that. Oh, that's weird. Now that would have been cool. No, it just looks like a regular eye and he's got a tear, he's crying. Yeah, he's upset, poor little Michael. Are you fucking kidding me? You know, and then she goes to reach for uh, him or something and he backs up and he's got this long hair and he puts it back on and he gets back. Oh my God, oh my God. Um, I did like the, uh, the um, laundry shoot uh, scene. I enjoyed that. I thought that was kind of cool. It was a different way to build suspense. It was a different way to uh, uh, have a have you know a moment of tension and kind of like oh what the fuck's gonna happen? You know this little girl stuck in this laundry kind of shoot. I thought that was cool, and um, yeah, I I enjoyed that. I enjoyed that scene. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's oh god, I could go on and on and on. What's this? You know, I mean, what's there to say about? Donald Pleasance, right? I mean, he's great in everything and you can tell that he's just, you know, he he's trying to get through Halloween 5 and you got to give him some credit um, because a prestigious actor like, like Donald Pleasance, and like I said, he thought the whole fucking thing was rubbish anyway. And you can look this up. It's got to be somewhere online. It's from an article back, back then. Maybe it's, uh, from one of the, fa the Fangora, 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 Fan Fangora, whatever that magazine is. I think it was from one of those. But anyway, um, you know, you can sort of tell that he's just trying to get through this and he's kind of like, what is this? Like the telepathy and the communication and the... 
and the house. What is this? Like, it, it was Halloween 5, folks. Halloween 5 sealed the deal for the Halloween franchise. That's what it did. Um, another thing I didn't like about Halloween 5 was the ending. Okay, so here you have this man in black in these cowboy boots, you know, uh, that walks into this jail cell. There's Mike, and I hate this shot. I hate this shot of Michael in the jail cell. He's sitting there in the jail cell with his head down in chains, you know, you know, in chains, kind of going, <sighs> yeah, guess I was caught. What the, f why am I seeing this boogeyman, this supernatural flavored guy in this jail cell? He's been humanized, like really humanized. Okay, now remember, I'm a huge proponent of, you know, the absence of character, the absence of motive, the supernatural elements and flavor, but he's he's still part human. This is like, no, he's just some guy. Now he's just some complete guy just sitting in a jail cell going, shucks, I was caught. What the fuck am I, he's got his head down and everything. He just looks so weird. It looks so dumb and, and awkward. And then you have this guy come in, this shadowy figure with his hat and his trench coat and a gun and murders everybody and, and, and Michael escapes. Look, it took them six years, six fucking years, almost the same amount of time between Halloween uh, 2 and um, Halloween 4 to, um, uh, to get to the curse of Michael Myers. I can guarantee you that when they finished Halloween 5, they had no idea who the fuck that was. They had no idea who the fuck that was. They may have had some sort of idea, oh, maybe we'll do this, maybe do that. But if they did, it wouldn't have taken six fucking years to move into production on The Curse of Michael Myers. But it was such a shit show, the crew that came on to The Curse of Michael Myers, the production team was like, well, what the fuck is this? We have writers and we're trying to get a director. And then, you know, uh, Joe Chappell, I think, came on to direct, uh, um, I think that's his name, Chappell, Chappell, uh, to direct The Curse of Michael Myers because they couldn't find anybody to do it because it was, a, you know, like, what the hell is this? It was a fucking shit show. Five destroyed the fucking franchise because everybody looked at four and went, okay, oh, cool, okay, hey, cool ending. Oh, whoa, whoa. cool, okay. And then everybody looked at five and went, what the fuck is this? Like you set something up that was okay. What the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? And then Halloween six was just them trying to justify everything they did in five. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? And some people like it. Some people are like, no, hey man, it worked for me. Oh, come on. Now you have the thorn cult and you know, Michael having sex with Jamie. And I mean, did he have sex with Jamie or was she artificially inseminated? I mean, picture that for a minute. Michael Myers on top of Jamie banging her. I mean, what the hell is that? Because really? Or was he, or, or was she artificially inseminated? I hope that's what it was. Maybe that's what it was. Maybe they, they, they actually say that in six. I don't know. Comment below and let me know. I haven't, I haven't seen it in a long time because if they, as if they did, oh <laughs> holy fucking shit. So, um, so anyways, folks, uh, I don't want to ramble on too much here, uh, but I just want to let you know that, you know, I, I like Halloween four. I think it's a, a decent sequel. I don't love Halloween four. I think there are problems. Um, there, and some are major, um, but I think it's a decent return and I loved the way they ended it. I personally think Halloween five should have carried on with Jamie. Okay. Maybe it's a few years later, maybe wait a year or two and she's in an asylum or something like that, right? With Dr. Loomis, seeing her and Dr. Loomis and that dynamic and how that would have, you know, uh, kind of, uh, um, um, played out and keep Rachel alive, right? So Rachel is visiting Jamie, you know, in the psychiatric ward, you know, Jamie, uh, uh or sorry, Rachel is really the only, you know, parent or, or, or guardian or friend that Jamie sort of has and sort of play that maybe she escapes or maybe she's older now, you know, wh whatever the case is kind of continue on with that. That would have been interesting. I'm not saying it would have been a success, not at all. But Mustafa Akkad didn't want it. He was like, nope, Michael, I don't give a fuck whether the movies are good or not. Michael Myers will just continue to come back. Listen, Mustafa Akkad executive produced every fucking Halloween film, okay? So you can blame him for five and for six and for H2O and for resurrection, um, you know, just as much as you, you know, as you can blame everybody else involved. Um, so that's what I would have done. I would have continued, because that's what, that's what the setup was. The ending to Halloween four was like, oh shit. And then Halloween five is like, oh yeah, no, 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 we, 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 we were gonna, and, and then we just, no, 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 <laughs> psych, you know, and it's like, why the fuck would you do that? 
You know, if you're gonna psych us out, at least create something really cool. And we're like, okay, they psyched us out, but five is like, fuck. No, it's like you psyched us out and gave us a big pile of donkey shit on a plate. Like, what the fuck are you doing? Anyways, folks, that's how I feel. Halloween five was the beginning of the end for the Halloween franchise. If you see Halloween four was acceptable. It was a decent return. Wasn't perfect, but it was a decent return. Didn't like the mask. Didn't like some of the pacing. Didn't like some of the characters. Um, some of the cinematography is suspect. The opening's fantastic, by the way. Um, love the opening. Um, but there's, the, there's other things I could get into, but that would be a whole video in and of itself. Um, but it was a decent return with a fantastic ending. Four, uh, sorry, five? No, F five is what sealed the deal. Five is what put the nail in the coffin to the Halloween franchise. Anyways, folks, my name's Dave McRae. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. Do you agree with me? Do you think five was the beginning of the end? Or maybe you think Halloween four was the beginning of the end. Maybe you think Halloween four is a fucking shit show. Hey, look, I don't think Halloween four is fantastic, but I think it's the best sequel, in my opinion, away from one and, uh, sorry, um, outside of Halloween two. I think it's better than five, six, H2O, Resurrection, and any of the Rob Zombie films. Uh, but I think it's far inferior to Halloween 2 and Halloween 1. But those are my opinions and my thoughts. Comment below and let me know your thoughts. I would love to hear them. If you want to follow me on Facebook, you can at facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. McRae is M-C-R-A-E. Facebook.com slash many things Dave McRae. And I always try to post there when I have uh, some time. And uh, But I needed to vent about this. I needed to get this off my chest, folks. Um, uh, uh, thanks uh, to all of you who tuned in last night when I was doing a bit of a live feed. Um, I've uploaded some software and some and some stuff that I'm trying to get the hang of. So if you see me go live uh, over the next little while, um, it might be because I'm trying to test some things out and I need to go live to do that. Um, but uh, I remove them after the feed is done because they're just tests. Um, but don't worry. Um, in the near in the near future, I'll have like official live sort of broadcasts that will remain on my channel. But anyways, uh, yeah, comment below and let me know. My name's Dave McRae, and I will talk to you guys soon. Cheers.